Welcome to South Sound Seniors, a program for and about older adults. And I am very excited to have with me today, Sandy, your name just went out of my brain. Sinclair. Sinclair, how could I forget that? That's okay. That is, thank you for reminding me. I'm glad you remember your name, yeah, Sandy. Right. I'm not gonna forget your name because it's all about the Mackenzie River. That's right, <laughs> that's right. You've got an advantage on me. So Sandy, you are sitting here, first of all, um, I wanted to say, I'm so glad you come to the Olympia Senior Center and that yeah. we got to meet there. But you aren't usually dressed like this when you come. Izzy wants to come up and see this fur that you've got on here. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. It's pretty warm in here, so I'm not <laughs> going to keep it on all the time. But this is what we always looked like when we taught school up there in the Arctic Circle. Uh -huh. And this is, this is not unusual what this to look like. We came to school with moose hide mucklucks and moose hide gloves and furs. Yeah, look That's at what these, we end up doing. These gloves are pretty amazing. Look at the beadwork yeah. on them. So this is moose hide, huh? Yeah. Wow. The schools are interesting because all the kids wore moose hide uh -huh. feet, you know, uh, um, and so did the teachers. And you know, this is home smoked moose moose hide, uh -huh. and so it had a certain smell. Yeah. <laughs> and but we all didn't mind it at all because we smelled the same. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Wow. Wow. But the kids, I tell you, you know, this is up in the Arctic and it's a cold. And uh -huh. so we ended up um, having a wood stove in the, in, where the uh, kids were staying. And, and it was pretty warm up for here, but down below it was pretty cold. Uh -huh. I remember I came in there one time and just put the thermometer on the floor and it was 20 degrees oh, dear Lord. above zero. But, uh -huh. it, but at wow. the, its chest level, it was, it was plenty warm. So uh -huh. the kids were all right. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness gracious. Well, well you really wanted to tell a little bit about a story of a trip that you took to the high Arctic Ocean, yeah. Yeah, the Arctic Ocean up above Canada. Yeah, right? you're saying, why would I ever want to go all the way to the Arctic Ocean? Uh -huh. Well, this was our last year before we were um, leaving Alaska, and we wanted to go ahead and do something significant. And it was close enough to the Arctic um, Ocean, and I had an airplane, uh -huh. and here's what it was. Um, it was just before Easter, okay. and so I said to the kids, I'm going to give you an Easter vacation um, starting on Thursday, and I'll be back after, uh, after a, a week. Uh -huh. And so um, I just turned the kids out of school, and they had, they had the, the Easter vacation. You can't call it Easter vacation right. nowadays, <laughs> right. but that's what we did because we teamed up with a um, missionary who got in contact with a Canadian missionary and they wanted mm -hmm. to have an Easter service uh, together with the Eskimos. That's uh -huh. what he wanted to do and I was going to cooperate with the same thing. Uh -huh. So we had an airplane and, and he did too and we ended up with well, his would go a little bit faster than mine but we were closer about the same and we were going to go ahead and fly together over to a place called Aklavik on the Mackenzie River okay. inside uh, the high arctic of canada okay you want to show me where the mckinsey well, river yeah, is over there that's right i got to show you a little bit about where where we went here so um uh, this is where where Klavik was okay. this is all the mckinsey river right okay, here that's... and this right here was the arctic ri uh, river and so okay. we came from the arctic river into the mckinsey okay and um and that's that's the uh the whole uh Big, long issue of, um, wow. of transportation of uh, that part of Canada was through the Mackenzie River. Okay. Well, anyway, so we um, we were flying. We we're going to go ahead and fly in there together. Mm -hmm. His airplane and mine, and their and our wives. Uh huh. And um, so that was the plan to go ahead up there. They wanted to have an Easter service mm -hmm. with the Eskimos. Okay. And with the people up there on the reindeer mm -hmm. area, and so I I wanted to go ahead and be a part of that. And so we did uh -huh. it. Wow. So anyway, we started with uh, getting a. Uh, organized on um, inside the airplane we had all kind of supplies we had extra gas we had extra food and mm -hmm. supplies in case we had problems and enough food to be able to handle uh, our if it's an emergency well anyway so then we um, we left fort yukon here mm -hmm. inside alaska on the right. arctic circle right there and we're flying up the porcupine river and that was easy navigation and um, Okay, when it comes to navigation, we had to think about something. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. because both he and I had magnetic compasses. Okay. All right. And we Tell knew that what... you get close to the magnetic North Pole, uh -huh. your magnetic compass is worthless. Oh, it goes okay. crazy. Uh -huh. We knew that was going to happen. Uh -huh. But we didn't expect it to happen so soon. Oh. And so uh -oh. that's what that was our uh, big surprise. Uh huh. Anyway, I have to tell you just a little bit about my family. They don't like me to tell these adventures because they figure it's bragging. Oh no, it's but not bragging. When you talk about an adventure in which you made a lot of mistakes and misjudgments, uh -huh. then it's not bragging. Yeah. And so that's why we're using this particular program to go ahead and let my <laughs> My uh, kids see I'm not bragging. No. <laughs> anyway, so hey, we, um, we started out, and uh, our first stop it was inside uh, Canada at a uh -huh. little trading, uh, not a trading, but a trapping village called oh. Old Crow. Old Crow, And that okay. was inside, uh, inside the Canada. We had uh -huh. to go ahead and check in with the amount of police. Well, anyway, oh. come, we landed down there, and it was still on the Porcupine River. That's part of the river right next to where we taught school. And so we flew up the Porcupine River and landed at Old Crow. But... Right at Old Crow, the wind was so much, so strong that it had blown most of the snow off the ice. Oh. And so then we landed, but we we're landing on ice instead, instead of, of snow. snow. Oh. And that shook up Marie because it made so much noise, you know. Oh. We always used to a nice, soft, quiet landing snow on snow. Snow landing. And also it would slow down quickly. Uh -huh. But ice didn't have any restriction right. on that. And so uh -huh. we ended up not being able to stop oh, on the ice way, way. We're going, st we couldn't stop. And there's no brakes on skis, you yeah. know. And so we ended up going and going and going. See, I, we, we had to do something fast because we're way going past where they were supposed to be. And so I had an old, this is an old airplane with a wooden prop, oh, old my fashioned gosh. wooden prop. And so I decided I'm going to go ahead and stop this airplane. And so I turned off the engine so my wooden prop wouldn't break. When I turn into a snowbank, oh. <laughs> I turn into a snowbank and stop the airplane. Uh -huh. And that's that. Was, but it made a great big hole in the snowbank. Oh dear! <laughs> and so, um, uh, but at least it didn't hurt anything. Okay. So we end up we um, uh, we asked the Mountie, can we put some gas here so we can pick it up when we laugh? He says, put it in that hole uh -huh. that we made. <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> with the snow. That's funny. Anyway. <laughs> And it'll still be here when you come back because there's no, th there's no thievery in the, when the Mounties are in control. Okay, so we went in to check on our, with the uh, Mounties and they had to, all the paperwork you had to do to become a, into a new country. And the Mountie uh, had been up there all winter long uh -huh. without any intelligent um, conversation with a, with a white woman. Uh -huh. And so both the women came in and, and he wanted to talk, just, just conversation, because uh -huh. <laughs> he was so lonely with, with talking with just the people that he had been with all winter. Uh -huh. And so he did talk and talk, and pretty soon it got pretty late. Uh -oh. And so we were ready to get going, and finally we got late, and it was almost dark when okay. we left Old Crow, heading for the place where we knew we had to go to, was on the Kenzie River, was a Klavik. Okay, so we took off, and... Um, and uh, I had an 8 millimeter camera, uh -huh. and I wanted to get a picture of that real rugged mountain pass that we came through and how jagged and so forth to make a good picture. Uh -huh. um, so I turned my airplane a little bit to the left and so I could get the picture, and I took the picture of, of, the, of that um, mountain. But I have to tell you that I didn't think too much because... We had both had radios, but they could only talk to the tower. We oh. couldn't talk to each other. Oh, my goodness. This was in 1950, and they didn't want to have any, uh, this is a, during the Cold War with Russia, uh -huh. and they didn't want to have any, any people talking about where they were or anything like that uh -huh. in, in the airways. So we could not um, um, talk to each other. That's so hard. I couldn't tell them what I was doing, and I turned back on course, and he was gone. <gasps> Oh, no. I don't know where he went. Uh oh. I, I, you know, I was going one way for a while, and he was going the other way, and we're both going 100 miles separated. an hour oh, my away gosh. from each other. And then I, I made the mistake of, of make, doing that, and we didn't find each other at all. We were lost. Oh wow. Uh, be, because we didn't find each other, and we couldn't um, use. And just shortly after that, the, the compass went crazy, uh -huh. and we didn't oh, expect that to happen so soon. Oh my gosh. That was a magnetic compass. Well, anyway, so. Uh, we um, 
we're, uh, we're lost for two reasons. We lost our wingman and we lost our, uh, navigation. our navigation and wow. our uh, communication. So what so, do we do then? So what do I do then? What, you know, I, I have to go back to when I was a student and um, uh, um, I was getting my um, aircraft uh, uh, commercial license and commercial um, instrument rating mm -hmm. by, this, by this instructor in Boeing Field. And he was one of those instructors that was with the Army during the war. Uh -huh. and he was a hard-nosed mm -hmm. instructor, and he was very, very unpleasant to be. Uh -huh. And he was, you know, yelling at me and doing all things, and I hated him uh -huh. <laughs> until that day. Oh. Because even though I hated when he acted that way, he said some things that I had to remember. How can I get out here? I'm lost uh, over the unexplored land. What am I going to do? And he says, when your, when your instruments that I'm teaching all, go to pieces uh -huh. and you can't tra uh, tra believe them, think outside of the cockpit. Uh -huh. And what did he mean by that? I didn't know what he meant. But anyway, I just tried to realize that there was got to be something out here to tell me what to do. And so right behind me, the sun went down. Uh -huh. oh, gosh. And I know the sun sets in the west. Right. And so I could turn, there's no, there was no sunlight there. There was just a red glow where the sun went down over the horizon. So that's west. So if I went directly away from it, then I'm going east. Uh -huh. So that's the only thing I realized, and it all came from the instructor that I hated <laughs> until that moment. Uh -huh. But anyway, so we, we were flying east, we thought, uh -huh. as best we could, on the uh, Porcupine River. And then the Porcupine River got so we didn't see it anymore because we couldn't see below, and it went somewhere else, so we weren't on the cor Porcupine Whoa. River at all. And so... <clears throat> Marie was searching for some, in, something for security, and we, she did, after about an hour's flying, she saw a light. Uh huh. It was just a little light in a trapper's cabin. It wasn't, out, it wasn't the whole city of Klavik uh, at all. But we knew that there was some trapper out there who left the light on so he could probably go outside and, and work with his dogs or something. He didn't do it for us, yeah. but anyway. <laughs> that, so we saw a light, it gave us hope that we're on, gonna be all right. So, but so we just still kept going what we thought was east to, um, to get to the Great Mackenzie. And after about another half hour, we saw this giant white snow and ice that was going north and south. And that was the Mackenzie. So we felt, oh, we finally got some place we didn't know. But that didn't put us into the place where we wanted to be, a Klavik. We didn't know where that was. We knew it was on the Mackenzie River, that's all. Mm -hmm. So when we got over this white area, we decided which we turn, right or left. We decided to turn left and go north, mm -hmm. and that was what we thought would, would be to where the Klavik was because of, of just the general area. The other way. We had seen the charts before. Anyway, and so that was the right choice because about another half hour we saw these lights of this village that oh. was the only place in the whole 500 miles where there was any satisfactory uh, help for people wow. and, and gas and food and all the things we need to survive. That must have been a sight for sore eyes. So finally oh we gosh. got, we, we, we knew it. Okay, so then we landed on the Mackenzie River. We saw there was one airplane down there. Uh. So we taxied up to it, but it wasn't my... Uh, oh, it wasn't? It, wasn't my, it was the local bush pilot. His name was Mike Zuko. Uh -huh. I'll never forget his name. But anyway, <laughs> and he, I told him the situation. We, uh, we had got separated, and so what, uh, what is he thinking we might do? Well, I said, you got to go ahead and figure out where the other fellow is. And so we figured, we get to figure he had about 40 more minutes of fuel before uh -huh. he ran out of fuel. So that gave us a, what we had to do for looking for him. So we gassed up my airplane on g Canadian gas and got ready. And mm -hmm. we were just about ready to take off when we heard his airplane, the oh. popping cylinders of his airplane. I just love that sound because that <laughs> meant we got uh, collected it with our person we were traveling we lost with. From. Yeah. So then oh we landed my gosh. And um, wow. The, and so we ended up uh, uh, the uh, the missionary he'd been talked to came down and talked to us and he says I'm going to plan the next three days for you. Uh -huh. We're going to fly. We're going to fly up and give Easter services to this place up on the Arctic Ocean uh -huh. and up to um, this place where the reindeer herd is the Eskimos were and into the main. Uh, 
office of the um, reindeer herd. And so there's three places we're going to stop. Okay. So well, how are we going to navigate? Well, he, this fellow had a gyro compass, which uh, is exactly what we needed to have it being flying this area. Uh -huh. And he could go ahead and so, but the point is, you're going to have to fly right next to me. Okay. And so the next day we took off. Mackenzie River is big and wide. So we took off all three together, him in the middle, and uh, two airplanes on side it on skis, you know, uh -huh. on, the, on the giant Mackenzie River. So there we were flying in formation uh -huh. um, because we had to keep track of the guy that had the good compass. So we were going <laughs> north, and it was nothing but just white snow and so forth, all we could see, and hardly anything there at all, until pretty soon we, found, we saw a, a seagoing ship in the snow. Uh -huh. And of course, that means we were to the Arctic Ocean. That's right. the only reason we know we, we was in the water ocean uh -huh. instead of the snow. So we landed there, and usually when you come to a, a bunch of Eskimos or people out in the brush, when you land, there's not many, there's not very many visitors very often. So right. they always come in and and welcome you, and you know, find uh -huh. out what's going on. Uh -huh. But when well, three three airplanes get, nobody came, not a soul came. Oh. And so we went up to the Hudson Bay Company and to get some gas, and he said, you know why nobody was here. What? They thought you were the Russians coming. Oh, no. Because oh we were flying in formation. Uh-huh. Oh, so it looked <laughs> and, like military. Um, this is during the, the uh, Cold War. The, um, the Cold War. Uh -huh. And we were, uh, and so they thought maybe we were the enemy. Uh-huh. Oh, dear. Until they found out <laughs> that we were enemy. Anyway, so that was the story. And the two, the two people started to have their uh, Easter service. And Marie and I wanted to go to talk to some of the people there. And we thought, well, there's a school out there. Let's go talk to the school. And um, so um, it was, oh, we walked into their schoolhouse and, and um, their inside the school was different than any school we've ever seen in the Arctic. Oh, really? They had um, you know, oil heat, mm -hmm. lots of uh, electrical appliances, and um, they were showing a movie to their kids. Oh, we wow. never did that kind of stuff uh -huh. where we were at all. We were in a little old school with a wooden, wooden stove and, and no uh -huh. electricity, but anyway, so that's what it was like in that one part of Canada. Wow. And uh, we thought they'd like to talk to us and so forth, but they didn't at all, really. <laughs> they ended up getting on their product. And the thing about it is they, um, the men were all in ties oh, and white wow. shirts, and the women were all in dresses. And we were wearing our clothes that, that became what we always wear in Alaska. And, uh -huh. uh, and we ended up, uh, we were just um, in that kind of a situation, <laughs> and we didn't... Um, they probably thought you were the riffraff. Yeah, they, yeah. they we were. Yeah, we were kind of the riffraff. That's a good point. We didn't, I'm going to take all my. Uh, can you know, I help so you I, with that? Oh here. wait, a minute, I better not. Here, yeah, okay. no, it's okay. I think we can get around here. Yeah, just see. Just Let's kind of, see here. I just it lets you know what we were wearing, just because. Yeah, uh, this is quite the get up here. Put your hood up so you can get your mittens off of there. There we go. Oh, anyway, I just want to go ahead and, and realize that we were out of place completely. Yeah. So they had their Easter service and we uh, were ready to leave. So we had to, then from um, the Arctic Ocean and the place was called Tuk Toyuk Tuk. Ooh. I love that sound because it, 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 um, it's, it kind of comes in a little later that, that there's a lot of things about that area. Uh -huh. Anyway, so um, we left and we head south and... Um, uh, we came to where the, um, uh, my, my friend had these Eskimo reindeer herders. Uh -huh. And so we landed by their little camp and, uh -huh. and came in and, and uh, found out that they um, had just killed a wolf a couple of days before, and a giant wolf. Uh -huh. And so that became our mattress. We slept on a, a, a wolf, wolf, <laughs> wolf hide that night. Untreated wolf hide. Oh and my that goodness. was really important to be able to have something warm. And um, they had just killed a wolf. Uh-huh. And see, the reason why I had to kill a wolf is because the wolf comes and attacks and it, and it kills one reindeer, uh -huh. eats out the tongue, and it goes to get another reindeer. <gasps> oh, no. Instead of killing uh -oh. the reindeer, you and know, eating there's the lots of meat thing. on a yeah. reindeer, but they, they'd have to break into the, uh, the meat from getting away with that fur. Uh -huh. And so they just kill it where they can get a quick bite. Uh -huh. And so that's why they had to kill that um, wolf. Uh, wolf. Why, don't, wow. uh, wolf. Wolf. Interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of things about not killing a wolf nowadays, and, uh, uh -huh. and we didn't. We, we had to kill that one. Yeah. Anyway, so we had a good um, time talking with them, and and they um, they talked about their lifestyle. Uh huh. They had a thousand reindeer right there. Wow. And uh, they had to go ahead and 
make sure that all the baby reindeers uh -huh. were um, given back to the uh, um, government. And so they, huh. got, they got to keep the, the other ones and made a living out of that. But oh, the baby reindeers go back to the government where they can start another herd uh, group somewhere. of um, huh. reindeer herds for other, other people. That's, that's what they did. And that's, uh -huh. that, was their, um, uh, that was their pattern. But living out there, we talked to some of the guys. And they say, you know, it's really lonely out of here. Uh -huh. And there's not any Eskimo girls that want to live out uh, in a lifestyle like this. Uh -huh. So they, they mentioned that that was one of the complaints they uh -huh. had. And because uh, he was in love with one of those girls, but he, she's back in a clavic and, uh -huh. and uh, she wouldn't come out to the she reindeer hide at all. Yeah. Hide her, her at all. So that was one problem. Another problem is uh, they ask us when we all talked to the um, flying community, uh -huh. Tell them not to buzz over close to a, a reindeer herd because they tend to buzz over to look at them. That scares the reindeer and they scatter all the place. Oh, boy. And they had to go ahead and get them back together. So that uh -huh. was one they asked us to do is make sure that we tell the pilots do not buzz a reindeer herd. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was that. Anyway, we ended up seeing the reindeer and got a bunch of good pictures and all that. Uh -huh. But then we, uh, then we left. Uh, uh, there and went to the main headquarters of where they they had the headquarters for uh, the reindeer herd. It's a government government little city there uh -huh. where they um, uh, do the um, uh, reindeer help. They actually b help butcher the reindeer. They uh -huh. sell the meat because uh -huh. they eat, those people eat reindeer for food, uh -huh. and um, and they also had to go ahead and and, and make a. Uh, uh, establishment that took care of all that and so this was a government little city mm -hmm. pretty good sized city and they were going to have a nice um, uh, a group uh -huh. to have a, um, a good Easter service for them uh -huh. oh. so they went on doing that and I um, I went around to to see some of the other things that were uh -huh. out there and I ran across this one this old Mountie that, that, that was uh, all by himself up there he had already retired uh -huh. Instead of going back to south and live in a place where it's smooth, he wanted to go ahead and live in the rough places that that he lived all his life. Oh, interesting! And he had a bunch of model sailboats uh -huh. uh, of what he had served on, and uh -huh. he was also part of a number of searches that started uh, on the Franklin expedition oh. that searched what they could to find that. And I'm going to bring that up a little later on. But anyway, mm -hmm. well, let you know that. The Franklin Expedition started in 1845 with two ships. Uh -huh. and they went all over the, the, trying to find a Northwest Passage. Uh -huh. That was their plan. Well, they never were seen of again. They were, they were lost, and, and, and they, the ship sank, and they ended up trying to go ahead and, and um, find a, uh, survive out, and they, and they all lost their lives. Wow. And that's where the ship sank right there. Oh, wow. Anyway, so they had been further up north, and then they came yeah, down south. Yeah, they came south. trying to find a way to get over here. Wow, and wow. And one of the ships uh, came across from Alaska, was searching for them. It was uh -huh. a search that went on for 30 years or more. Oh, goodness. Until they gave up on it. And it, can, it sank, too, up here, and it lost uh, uh -huh. some men, and, and all the um, uh, men tried to find their way out. Mm -hmm. That was just the thing. And, of course, uh, Lady Franklin had... had uh, 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 complaint against the uh, the British uh, Navy, and they said, mm -hmm. "Gee, you got to go ahead and find what happened to it." And so uh -huh. the search went on for years, and finally, not at that particular time, but since then, they found Franklin's ship uh -huh. under the ice when they could get some ca when they, when the, uh, global warming uh -huh. had made the ice go ahead, and and, and so that wow. it was clear here, and they could go ahead and find. Uh, they get it down there with cameras, and they found the uh, they found the um, Franklin's ship, and it was still in piece in, in, in one in piece. One piece, and wow! And the mass was still in it, and they could go ahead and get a camera down in there and get that, and that happened in 2014. 2014, just real recently. wow! Just wow. to kind of bring up to the, what happened right now. Uh huh. But it happened right here. Wow! Anyway, and um, one of the ships that came across here uh, that was looking for stopped by Tuktoyakuk. Uh -huh. And a lot of the people were involved in, in the Franklin search that lasted uh -huh. for, well, over 100 years. Wow. 
But anyway, wow. that's the story of, of Franklin, and, and he's right there. Uh -huh. he, he so did came. you know about Franklin before you? Oh yeah, we were. We just, that was one of the things we were we were interested in because uh -huh. all the history of the Arctic uh -huh. is is connected with Franklin, and 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 um, so that was one thing we wanted to do, and we didn't find it at that time. But boy, uh -huh. just after we, you know, 20 years after we got home, they found us here. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Wow. Anyway, so that's the story of Fra <coughs> story of Franklin. All right. Then we ended up um, uh, having a great big um, uh, <coughs> Easter service mm -hmm. with all the Eskimos there too. So that that's ah. what they wanted to do. And uh -huh. we were we were interested in kind of finding more about the Arctic. And um, so then Marie and I um, uh, left there, and and. When they, when they were about ready to get go, we both then left. The, this is a party of um, white people that were government workers mm -hmm. for these, the uh, reindeer hide, uh -huh. the reindeer um, Camp, uh, society there. Uh -huh. Okay, so then we went back to Aklavik, went back and okay. we got back to Aklavik that night and, and it's almost Easter time now. Uh -huh. And so then we, um, we wanted to go ahead and head for uh, Old Crow, uh -huh. and the, the Ra Mountie said, you know, we don't have any contact with uh, them by mail. Would you mind taking some letters for us <laughs> to Old Crow? And also some gifts that some of the people had to their friends. I said, sure, uh -huh. that'd be fine. And so we did that, and we, we took their stuff. And because of that, he said, I'm going to go ahead and give you a giant map uh, as, your, as my gift to you, because uh -huh. you're doing that for us. And it was a great big map of all the Mackenzie River Delta. Uh -huh. And it was so big, I couldn't even hardly open it up inside the airplane. But at least uh -huh. it had all that information on there. And so they thought they were giving me a, a real good thing. So uh -huh. we wouldn't get lost going home. Right. <laughs> okay, so we started out in the good weather. And then as soon as we got up to it, it started to be bad weather. Uh-oh. And we had to go south of the areas that we normally use. So and still couldn't use our compass. We didn't knew it was below that. Uh, so we were flying in an unknown territory, uh -huh. and we had already decided if we have problems uh, on communication, it, we're going to land on a big lake and talk about it uh -huh. together, you know. And so we were lost again, and we ended up um, landing on this giant lake, and both came up there with a chart I had, and we got it, and we said all these sh these little these little streams here have to go to a bigger stream, uh -huh. and the bigger stream will go to Port where the Porcupine River sooner or later. Uh -huh. So that's what we thought. Well, we got to go ahead and follow these little, the, the, one of these little creeks that we could see uh -huh. on our Mac, and it'll get, um, um, you know, a bigger creek, and pretty soon it'll get into Porcupine River. But we still didn't know where north was. Uh-oh. So we picked out this one set, of, this one little river, and started following it, thinking if it got bigger, we were going the right direction. Uh -huh. But it didn't. It got it smaller. Got smaller. Uh -oh. So, oh, now we know for sure, sure. We're it's going the wrong, the wrong way. way. <laughs> so we turned around and followed it until it got bigger, and then it got another little creek. And before too long, the engine that, that was that was causing me difficulty uh -huh. uh, started making noise and so uh -oh. forth. And so I pulled on the carburetor heat to kind of that's when we we keep it warm in the engine, and that helped a little bit. And the wind and the weather was bad, but anyway. Pretty soon, the, the the little river became a big river and came into the Porcupine River. It did. So that your was good theory thing. was good. And oh my goodness! The engine started to sound better. Uh huh. And the weather <laughs> got better, and pretty soon we started to be able to use our compass. All oh. those good things happened at once. Well, that's amazing. <laughs> wow. Shortly after that, we found Old Crow. Uh huh. We landed Old Crow, and they were worried about it because they were they had radio contact with the Clavix saying. You were being out. You were way overdue, and and uh -huh. um, we were worried about you. And I said, "Well, how about my gas? Is it here?" I said, "Oh yeah, it's still there it's still in the in hole." Still in the hole in the snowbank that you made. So I gave some of my gas. <laughs> I had two two five-gallon cans, and we put our gas. So we were set to get ready to go ahead and take our last trip to home. But this uh, Mountie had been in the wilderness all winter, and he had two nice educated white women that came and visited him so we <laughs> wanted to go ahead and talk with it so he said i have prepared an easter dinner for you oh wow i have saved this 
uh, canned ham uh -huh. all this winter for something special, and we're going to have an Easter dinner right here in my uh, uh, log cabin. Mm -hmm. And so that was fine, and um, and uh, and he had you know a little. This is wild wilderness country. A log cabin with a um, wood stove mm -hmm. and um, a kerosene lantern. Uh huh. And that was his. And wow. but two, he had two white women to talk with. Yeah. <laughs> and so that was. He didn't care about day. The, the white men. He wanted to talk <laughs> with the women. Okay. And, and, and the uh, and also the other white man, the other teacher, the Indian kids came in there, and so we had that party. Uh huh. Well, anyway, all the things that were so good. And the conversation is, he wanted to know what I was going to do since the the uh, um, person in charge of uh, law, the head um, of the, uh, what's the name of that? The uh, Supreme Court. Supreme Court. Uh -huh. The Supreme Court has just w given orders that there will be no more segregation in your schools. Oh, that's, so that's he knew that, and really I didn't even know. I never uh, paid any attention to, to the that, darn uh -huh. what was going on in the, that. We just paid attention to um, uh, what was going on in our own lives. But he said, that's what's going to happen. So what are you going to do? He said, I don't know. Well, you're going to have to decide pretty soon because it's going to happen. You're, you're, all, your, all your schools will have to be non-segregated. Segregated. Uh -huh. And so that was what he told me I had to do. <laughs> I, but he learned it in the more before he, I did. He was more concerned about it. We didn't care it. much about that. All we wanted, we did hear a little bit about the thing called the uh, um, uh, Cold War mm -hmm. becoming uh, more than that because we, um, in our place, there was one airplane a week that went real, real close to us, and it was one of those old B-36s that had six motors and uh -huh. just noisy as heck, and it was coming back somewhere from the north over our place until it got to the Yukon. I used the Yukon to come to find its way back to Fairbanks. But that was the, um, um, the only thing we knew about the Cold War. As far as we're concerned, the Cold War was just our little conflict with the weather. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For Marie and I, anyway. But anyway, there was something about those B-36s coming back north. They had an atomic bomb on them. Oh, really? We wow. didn't know that until later, but they would uh -huh. go to the edge of, uh, of the border of, of Russia uh -huh. and turn around, and that time another one would go ahead and come up and take his place, just in case there was any um, atomic weapons used against us. Uh -huh. This is going to be retaliation uh -huh. with, the, with the atomic uh, bomb hitting wow. the Russian people. So that's... Wow. That was happening. We didn't find until later that, that it had an atomic bomb on it. Goodness. But this was before hydrogen bombs, just a plain ordinary atomic bomb. Uh, yeah. That's still <laughs> tough <laughs> enough. Yeah, I guess so. For us. But anyway, so that was that. <laughs> and um, so we ended up um, hearing all the stuff we should have heard from the uh, what's going on in the world. All we wanted to know was just what was going on in our city, you know. Right. I was a, I was a trapper. You can buy a, at that time in Alaska, you could buy a, a hunting, fishing, and trapping license for three dollars. Oh my gosh! If you wow. were a resident of Alaska, so I trapped some beaver and I trapped uh -huh. some, some mink, and I, you know, and I and it sold up that for part of my business when uh -huh. I, when I was in uh, <laughs> that part. So I, I was wow. a trapper as well as a, as well as a teacher. <laughs> but anyway, one time one fella came in from the bush with his 16-year-old boy, and he wanted to go ahead and, and put him in school. He'd never uh -huh. been to school. Oh, my gosh. And uh, uh, actually, the boy wanted to do it. Uh -huh. it, it. There was no law that said he had to. It was an Indian kid. Uh -huh. There's no tribal law that said you had to do it in those days. But he wanted to go ahead and become a, uh, um, an educated person. And, uh -huh. and so at the end of the year, he was in the sixth grade already. He did everything uh -huh. real good. Wow. And, he, and so, But he knew a lot about trapping, and I didn't. So, so he, I wanted to go ahead and learn from him about trapping, uh -huh. and he wanted to learn from me about the education that we had in school. Oh, interesting. And I think he learned more than I did about <laughs> trapping. I, I think he learned more about school than I learned about trapping because he was, became a real good student. That's wonderful. And that's true. But anyway, wow. so then we are heading home, 
and it's dark now. Uh -huh. they, yeah, they were heading home, but we were right on the Porcupine River. Okay. And you could see that white, white Porcupine oh, River even uh -huh. in the dark. So we came flying in on, um, after this adventure on uh, the Porcupine River uh, as navigation, even though it was dark, and landed on the Fort Yukon Airport, which was lighted. It had lighted lights, and so that was our full adventure oh my gosh. with uh, with um, with uh, Marie and uh, wow she um, she must have been made of pretty tough stuff well she was more than I thought <laughs> because um, this was uh, she didn't know it until she got back but she was three months pregnant oh my goodness when we did this whole thing wow <laughs> wow and so she uh, um, that was the that was the thing that I didn't hear about until uh -huh. after she that's what, how, what she, kind of a warning woman she was. She didn't put that on my shoulders uh -huh. to, to worry about it. But wow. that was the whole wow. story of, of that trip. What an adventure. And so we ended up back in home, and, uh -huh. and, and we made it back by the day after Easter. Wow. You <laughs> lived to tell the tale. Yeah. Yeah, you had your own miracles along the way, it sounds yeah. like. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that's what wow. happened. Wow. That's quite an adventure. Yeah. And... I don't think you are bragging. I think it's a good story. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> I Thank think you. It's a good I, uh, story. Oh, you! I have to tell you that it. I really appreciated uh, my wife before that, but especially uh -huh. that. She oh, would, I'll bet. We're doing that. Wow. Well. That's good. That was an adventure, and I know you've written about that in your book about your years of teaching up in Alaska and various towns. That. The book has pictures of this. Uh -huh. you can, it kind of explains it all. But I want right. to let you know that was our... Great. And how I felt the one teacher that I really hated and <laughs> uh, became the, probably the best teacher of my life uh -huh. because he saved, he saved my life. Yeah. The life of you and your wife and yeah. your unborn child. Yeah, that's Good true. night. <laughs> Well, thank you, Sandy. I okay. appreciate your coming in to okay. share that story with us. And I hope to hear some more of your adventures at another point in time. Well, I don't know about that, but I do want to let you know that it's, it's in the book, it's, it's really told a little uh -huh. bit better than I told it. Well, I think you're a good storyteller nonetheless. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for coming in. You're welcome. In. All right. So thank you so much for watching this amazing Alaskan Canadian Arctic adventure.